Well, folks, today we got more to talk about with Nintendo Switch 2, thanks to Square Enix. And this isn't even a rumor or speculation. This is quite literally a fact, because they had their recent financial report, and they detailed out their future strategies when it came to how they were going to approach AAA game development. And this is a massive thing to pay attention to, because Square Enix does some very interesting things with a lot of their games, especially in the AAA space. Notably, they happen to have a lot of timed exclusives and or console exclusive games that end up going only over to Sony and PlayStation. You're thinking of things like Final Fantasy VII and you know, Remake and Rebirth and other properties as well. Final Fantasy sixteen. you know, that series has had quite a number of console timed exclusives. Uh, there was also some stuff with Dragon Quest for a little bit as well. Notably, that is a strategy that probably has worked for them in the past and They've been really keeping modern Final Fantasy away from other platforms for some time, but that strategy is completely changing moving forward. And guess what? Nintendo's next platform is included in their future strategies, which is something that they could sort of reference because Nintendo did announce it as the Nintendo Switch successor. So let's get into their documentation from their financial report. You'll see here under diversify earnings opportunity by strengthening customer contact points that they're going to be shifting to a multi-platform strategy. So if we look at this, you can kind of see what they're trying to get to here. It says, for HD titles, the group will aggressively pursue a multi-platform strategy that includes and for some reason, it's listed first, probably alphabetical order a little bit. Nintendo platforms. Let me let me look at that again. Includes Nintendo platforms, PlayStation, Xbox, and PCs. Now, what do they mean by this? This is especially in regards to major franchises and triple A titles, including catalog titles. Catalog titles would be like re-releasing games or remakes, remasters, right? So the catalog, but also major franchises and AAA titles. It will build an environment where more customers can enjoy our titles. In addition, it will also devise a platform strategy for SD titles that includes not only iOS and Android, but also the possibility of PC launches. Furthermore, the group will strive to maximize the acquisition of new users when launching a title and that of recurring users after starting management of a game operation. And here's the thing. They didn't just talk about this once. They have another document going over this plan. And again, I cannot emphasize Nintendo platforms. Yeah, obviously Nintendo Switch, but they're not saying Nintendo Switch. They're saying Nintendo platforms and AAA games, which we know Square has not been really bringing their AAA games to Nintendo. That is changing. Here's the next document here new medium term plan you see the four pillars the first pillar is to enhance productivity by optimizing the development footprint in the digital entertainment segment by focusing on development of titles delivering fun that only the group can create and build the development structure diversify earning opportunities by strengthening customer contact points shift to a multi-platform strategy building continuous customer contact points of our titles by stepping up digital sales create the interaction with customers by increasing sophistication of publishing function generating the opportunity of new revenue by offering ip across a range of entertainment experiences then you see rollout initiatives to create additional foundation stability so rebuild overseas business divisions from the ground up by introducing policies on organization and human resources allocation in Japan, enhance business infrastructure by implementing the PDCA cycle in a timely and appropriate manner, and then the strike a balance between shareholder return and growth investment. I'll see earmarks of maximum of $100 billion for total strategic investments for over a three-year period. Yada, yada, yada. That's obviously investment stuff. But the big news here is obviously that Nintendo is included in their AAA future multi-platform strategy. Now, this is why we presume it's Nintendo Switch 2. One Nintendo platform forms because they can't just come right out and say the name of the platform but two because nintendo is the other major player in the space i know xbox is included on the list pc of course and all these exclusives that go to playstation always end up on pc eventually anyways but what i find fascinating here is when we're focusing on that idea of the multi-platform business the other big money making platform that square enix isn't involved in at the moment yeah xbox will make them a little bit 
is Nintendo. Look, the Nintendo Switch is on pace to move over 150 million units, and that by far makes it technically the most popular console in the world. Now, I understand that this might not apply to the future AAA games, the current Switch, but we also know Nintendo has announced a Nintendo Switch successor. They refer to this stuff as Nintendo platforms, and I just find this to be fascinating because it looks like Square Enix wants to be in early and often on Nintendo's next hardware with their AAA experiences. Now, you can also argue things like Octopath Traveler and other smaller titles of theirs might no longer have that, you know, Nintendo console exclusivity might just go full multi-platform, which should be fair, Octopath Traveler 2 was indeed full multi-platform and Octopath Traveler eventually came to other platforms, but it looks like they're doing away with that business strategy of even timed exclusives, let alone exclusive exclusives or console exclusive, and they're going to be going to this multi-platform strategy. You might be going, well, why is this? Well, if you dig through the rest of Square Enix's report, one big thing keeps standing out, and that is when you're looking at these net sales and operating incomes, and you're talking about the fiscal year stuff, you're seeing that they're actually downtrending very poorly with their current you know, business plan, or at least their former one of doing all these exclusive things. Their revenue and profits are really going downwards. And so Square Enix feels like one of the main things they can do to boost it is, hey, would you know it? Maybe not deny your biggest, most expensive games from one of the largest consumer bases out there. So while this won't really have much impact on the current Switch, because, well, there might be a few trickling games on the smaller size coming over, like a new Octopath Traveler or Triangle Strategy, or something like that. What we're really focusing on is obviously the big AAA games they said are going multi-platform and trying to do that right out the gate to reach a bigger customer base. So when we talked about in the past how Visions of Mana would likely end up being a Nintendo Switch 2 game, I do think that that is highly likely to happen. It's just Switch 2 is not going to be out by the time Visions of Mana is, which releases later this year. So they can't talk about that right now. But even if you look at some of the current catalog, like Final Fantasy 7 Remake and Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth and Final Fantasy 16, there's a chance all of those games could be getting ported over to the Nintendo Switch 2 because they also said this includes legacy content when they decide to bring it back in terms of ports and remasters and all that stuff. So I feel like all of that stuff now has a really good chance of moving over. And what I want to say in the end here is, Sony, I know you've been writing some fat contracts, obviously, to Square, but even despite those fat contracts, Square Enix's revenue numbers are down. So in the end, they are trying to look at what's best for their business, even if it's not best for the PlayStation business, because yes... Final Fantasy has been a reason that many people would buy a PlayStation. Now, if it's also on Nintendo's platform, and by the way, happens to look and run pretty damn well on that platform, it'll give people less incentive to need to buy a PlayStation in order to enjoy it when they can buy something they could take with them and enjoy it in that form as well. So I'm just putting out there that I think this is wholly good. This is really good for PC gamers as well. I know we didn't really cover that. PC gamers have been getting like late AAA ports. That's probably not going to be the case anymore. I think they're going to have universal launches on all the platforms when they can. Obviously, they can't universally launch on Nintendo Switch 2 right now, but that will probably be something they'll be able to do starting next year. This is just exciting because I'm a Nintendo fan that grew up uh, with Final Fantasy and other things being on the NES and the, and, and the Super Nintendo before it ended up shifting over to PlayStation. And it's really just lived there for a number of years. We've gotten some ports over the years, but it's really been like that and Dragon Quest. While well, we've gotten some of that stuff here, we even got Dragon Quest XI on Switch. A lot of that stuff really felt Sony forward, Sony focused. And it was understandable because they were making a lot of money with that strategy. But now that Nintendo has built what Square Enix must feel is a very reliable platform that will likely have a highly successful successor, they're viewing that now as, hey, we want to get in on this right away because we feel like one thing that could turn our business around is actually reaching this massive consumer base that we weren't really reaching with our biggest titles. We saw some success with smaller ones, but why wouldn't we want to put like Final Fantasy, you know, 7 Remake and Remaster there? Why wouldn't we want to put Final Fantasy 17 when that eventually comes up? Why wouldn't we want 
that to be on the platform because that's millions and millions of sales we're leaving on the table. And maybe it won't sell as well as it does on PlayStation, or maybe it will sell even better because after all, we really love our RPGs over here on Nintendo Switch. We already get like Monster Hunter and stuff. Like It's widely expected that the next Monster Hunter game will be on Switch too because Monster Hunter sells so damn well to the Nintendo audience. So in the end, uh, this is nothing but really, really, really excellent news for all of us Nintendo Switch 2 future owners out there, can't say current, uh, and I'm just really excited to see this level of third-party commitment to Nintendo's next platform. And again, this isn't a rumor. You can argue we had a lot of speculation, but this isn't a rumor. Square Enix is literally publicly committing to it, and I think that that is just good news for all gamers. I always think any multi-platform uh, supporter, you know, anyone like EA, Ubisoft, Square Enix, Take-Two, Honestly, it's in your best interest to support as many platforms as is reasonable. The fact that Square Enix thinks that Switch 2 is a reasonable platform to support, not just due to audience, but their games can actually run there, also bodes well for the specs of the Nintendo Switch 2 and the suggestion that if Square Enix is going to be able to bring their biggest AAA games to Switch 2, then everyone else probably can as well if they really, really want to. The big thing is going to be if GTA 6 next year, Grand Theft Auto 6, if that ends up coming over, then we know Switch 2 is definitely uh, going to hold its own because that's a game that's going to exist for like a decade. And it would be really cool if it could be on, you know, whatever Nintendo's current generation hardware is at that given time. Hopefully Switch 2. Anyway, it's not going to be on the normal Switch. Let's just be honest. Anyways, that's my thoughts there. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I'm insanely excited for this. I grew up with Square Enix games. I Literally, one of the primary reasons I had that PlayStation 5 back there was to play games like Final Fantasy VII Remake. The fact that, you know, a lot of this stuff is going to end up on Switch 2 just makes me excited because I've always felt like, at least for me, like Final Fantasy, and I know we focus a lot on that. Other franchises are impacted by this. Final Fantasy, to me, has always felt, and this might be ironic, best on Nintendo. And yes, that involves insane bias, and I'm well aware of that. Many of you grew up with Final Fantasy as being best on PlayStation, so I totally get it. But I gotta say, it feels like it's coming home. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.